indisputable. One thing that I was saying to um, to Tom and Vic, what connects you all? Like they said, quite a lot of people in the flat Earth community come from broke, maybe not broken places, but places where the system has fucked them up somehow. The system's fucked all of us. That's not true. Tend to have come from uh, backgrounds of where we've gone through hardships or abuse. That's not true. That's a sweet not true. They'll, they've, they've lied I've to us about the foundation. I've never been, you know, that's not the case. This documentary, like most Flat Earth material, does not appear to have been very well thought out or planned. These kids seem to think they have something profound to say, but haven't put forth the effort or rigor to know if the message has any substance. They leave in contradictory points like this without thinking about the bigger issues they present. I mean, as far as pathologizing people who are questioning the nature of the globe lie, um, I'd say you are speaking about people who are generally probably more critical thinking. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. And they are starting to come around to using logic and taking a little bit more um, self-control and self-responsibility. I fail to see how a movement based entirely on a millennium-long, globe-spanning, multi-country conspiracy has a basis in logic and self-control. But hey, I could be wrong. Wow me. To be able to come to their own conclusions based on their experiences and their own findings, their own reasonings, because it's quite clear that your own, my own findings and my own reasoning it contradicts what this authority has written down and has displayed to me through images and videos throughout my whole life. Keep this in mind as we look at the following examples and try to count the amount of novel arguments you hear. Is he basing his belief on his own understanding or parodying what someone else has already said? I'm talking about behavior of water. So yeah. you have a look at this. Yeah. When they tell us that we live on a globe, they're telling us that, that vast oceans, bodies of water have the ability to hold convex shapes like that yeah. on the surface. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. So what the scientists are telling us is, we have pictures from space, you must believe me. Yeah. Whereas really, I'm going to go with the behavior of water, how I know it. Yeah. The standing body of water itself from one elevation across to the other, it's not going to be. A, it's not going to decline in any other elevation here, else it's going to float. Do you yeah. agree with that? Because I'm no scientist, but... Um... Do you think you need to be a scientist to assess No, completely not, completely not. Of his three points, zero of them are original, and two are based solely on a conspiracy. For his only arguably scientific point, I highly doubt he has... They come to their own conclusions based on their experiences and their own findings, their own reasoning. I find the topic of bending water to be a regressive argument. On a globe, you would respond with gravity to explain why the water behaves the way it does, only for the flat earther to scream that gravity doesn't exist! Now they have changed the topic on you to prove that gravity exists. Gravity is an acceptable answer, but water bending was not the foundational argument. It is an underhanded approach that probably works well for street evangelism, but fails to stand up to scrutiny. It's not about offering robust points, it's about gacha questions. Well, well, one thing to prove whether it's a globe or a flat, a boat, a boat floats across the sea from point A to point B. Yeah. You measure that mileage, right? And then you get the same mileage where a plane goes over the same area. Now, if the plane is exactly the same mileage as the boat, it's flat. If the plane travels further than the boat, it's round. Simple. This old man is correct in his reasoning. He is talking about arc length and how it changes with respect to the radius of a circle. The larger the angle, the larger the arc length. This is the reason why the ISS has to travel so fast. It, it, but I won't say it, back to the, it doesn't really affect everyone's life whether it's flat or globe, does it really? I think it does. Now I think if people had a connection to where they were and they had a solid foundation with which to build up all their information, who they are, why they're here, what went on before, all of that stuff. Oh, yeah. If we had a solid, more solid foundation there, I don't think we'd have anywhere near as much of this, uh, this confusion and bewilderment which produces these irrational behaviours, mm. these selfish attitudes that people have today. The R ideology will save the world reasoning emphasises just how religious and cult-like the Flat Earth movement is. These people don't simply see themselves as investigators, but saviours. It really shoots their scientific credibility in the foot. Oh, everybody all right? 
that, that gentleman came up to speak to us and we've no sign or anything to attract him, so... Do you think that he may have been a plant then? I'm just asking, I'm just asking, because would you go up to a random group of people and just say, hey guys, what's going just, on? It's uh, critical thinking really, isn't it? You know, not my own what are you filming? Well, what we're here doing today, sir, is we're talking about, um, well, I'm, I'm talking about behaviour of water. I mean, who would you reckon would send him? And that's going off into, par into paranoia land, isn't it? He's <laughs> this is so disingenuous. You go out to the park with street epistemology materials ready and bitch about the one guy who was smart enough to question your bullshit. His question wasn't even a good one, but you are too ignorant of your own beliefs to notice it. SMRT! I mean SMART! <laughs> We're, we're looking into flat earth basically, the yeah. earth being flat rather than round, right? Yeah. Well, basically, um, they give us this curvature of the earth, it's 25,000 miles circumference yeah. curvature. So, at, at 100 miles out, right, yeah. the building in front of us should be beyond 6,666 foot, foot of curvature. So, that's thousands of feet of curvature. But yeah. yet, with a zoom lens and a camera, you can zoom in 100 miles out and it's still there, you can still see it. So, that's not measuring beyond a curve. If you are wondering about curvature and the horizon, I would suggest looking into long range shooting videos on YouTube or large scale civil and geotechnical engineering discussions on Reddit to find plenty of real world examples of people actually working with the globe and not disingenuous zealots parroting someone else's talking points. Curvature is well understood, not a nail in the globe's coffin. We're not, we taught from the first, the first thing we, we learn in school is Earth's a ball, Earth's a globe, our solar system is what is in the first year of school before we can critically think um, and then we just accept it. How did all these flat earthers go to such shitty schools? Or were they just sleeping through the parts where critical thinking skills were taught and encouraged? How did they develop their current critical thinking skills? I'm sure they're from a very respectable source. Excuse me. Have you heard of the, the banksters, basically, the, the Rothschilds and the oh, Rockefellers, yeah, yeah, the yeah. ones that are behind the scenes, the Masonic elite, they're the ones in charge, they're at the top of the pyramids, we're just the, 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 basically the worker bees at the bottom. <laughs> 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 <laughs>